and welcome back to Michelle Scrapbooking Thoughts. I'm Michelle, and the project we're going to be creating today is called, is what I'm calling, my Loaded Christmas Card Tri-Fold Album. So, lots, lots going on there with that title, but I was just trying to figure it out, you know, because when you open it up and you see what's inside, you're going to see why I was going to say it was loaded. So, it has two closures. It's made with one sheet of... Um, 12 by 12. I have glue all over this. This will fit into a regular business size envelope. Even this one, I've got, you know, the beads. Some are flat, some are bulky. I've got the tree popped up. I've got other embellishments on the tree. I've got Christmas down here with beads. And even with all of this, it will still fit in the envelope. Now, it's probably going to cost me extra postage when I go to mail them, but when I go to mail them, I'm not going to have it as thick as what's on here. I just wanted it to look pretty to show you what it could look like if you were hand giving these out instead of mailing them, and of course for my pictures. But if you don't add a lot of three-dimensional type items, it'll go in here and won't cost that very much to ship. But it's got two closures. It will open up on either side. Both sides do have to be opened for it to open efficiently. Let's get this open here. I, I planned to do this video earlier. It's nighttime here, but I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with the front. And I thought about going live with just the cover set of the first designer series paper piece, but I was like, no, I want it to look pretty. Okay, so are you ready? So it opens up. And it folds out. Ta-da! <laughs> I think that is just the, the coolest thing ever. And not only do you have all the spots for journaling and photoing, but you also have a couple of areas here on the back. So, super cute item. I know it looks complicated, but I promise you it is not complicated by any means. It's really easy. It's really simple. The hardest part is cutting all the pieces, but the larger squares are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And the smaller ones on the side are one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. And then your front and back pieces are two and three quarters by eight and three quarters. So they're your biggest pieces. So I just love it. I think that it would be so cool to get a Christmas card, and especially if it hasn't been somebody that you've talked to in a while, or, you know, maybe they're not on Facebook and can see all your pretty pictures that you've been posting, and, you know, you can add photos and journal, really cute. Or if you didn't even want to make this a Christmas card, and it could just be a mini journal, and, and that would work too, so. Plus, what I like about these, if you're not going to send them as cards, a lot of times we make albums and they're really thick and we're trying to find places to store them. These fold flat. So, I mean, you could easily put these away somewhere and then go back and look at them and then not take up a lot of room because they do fold flat. So, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to show you how to create it, how to score it, how to cut it, and I'm going to decorate some pieces with you just to show you but I'm not going to decorate, you know, with all this in the front, and I don't know, I might be able to, you know, get all the pieces decorated on the inside, but it's, it's fairly simple. Once you start, you know, they're pretty simple. The only thing I do have to tell you, there is a little something, and when we get to that, I'll show you. But, oh my gosh, I'm so excited with this. I think this is the cutest thing ever. Okay, so let's get started. You're going to need a piece of 12 by 12. And you are going to need a cutting tool of some sort. I'm going to use this one for now because we need to cut it three inches off of here. We need to cut three inches off so that you're left with a nine by twelve. Okay, don't throw this away. You're going to need it. Okay, so now what we need to do is I need to bring in my scoreboard. And the reason I didn't cut it and score it with this one is because my blade is bad. I don't have a replacement. So, and you can tell when your blade's going bad because when you go to cut, you get all that fuzzy stuff on the side and 
I didn't want to do that. All right, so on the 12 inch side, we're going to score this at three, six, and nine. Then we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees to the nine inch side. Make sure it's square. And we're gonna score this at three and six. That's what we're gonna do there. So basically you have three, six, nine, 12, three by three even squares. Now, I'm gonna set this aside for just a second so we can get all of our scoring done. And we're gonna bring in our three by 12 inch piece. And we're gonna score this one at one and a half, three, six, nine, and ten and a half. That is correct. Okay, so that way we can get all of our scoring out of the way and we're not back and forth back and forth. Okay, you're probably wondering about my cutting mat. It's not new. It's just for what we're going to do next, you need to make sure you have a cutting mat on your work surface. Otherwise, it will cut into your table because we're going to be using an X-Acto knife here shortly. So we're just going to fold and burnish on the score lines. These are so fun to make, and I know they look difficult, but it's really not. If any of you are in Florida and Nicole is knocking on your door, I am thinking about you. My parents are in Florida, and they're receiving a lot of wind and rain, so my dad and I have been in contact most of the day. Okay, so what we're going to do is there are two squares right here in the center. We want this whole panel to be gone. So what I'm going to do, you want to make sure you have a ruler. And you don't want to cut, when you start cutting this panel out, you don't want to cut the score line out. You want to cut just a hair below the score line because we don't want to take our folding mechanism away by cutting out that score line. So we're just going to stay a smidge lower than that score line. And I mean just a smidge. And then you're going to take your X-Acto knife. I better put my glasses on. Now my blade on this I found out today is not very sharp, so it took me a little couple of times to get this cut. I just had to keep going over it. But you can see why you need that cutting surface. Okay, so we've got the first one done. I'll have to go back in and do some trimming. Okay, just a smidge lower than that score line. Now, if you could do this on your trimmer... That's something you could do. I did not do that very well. So, I thought we're just going to do it this way. But you do you. You do what works best for you. better for me tonight than it was earlier today when I created the first one. Okay, last side. Hopefully. Okay, so that just came out. This one right here can be saved or thrown away. You're not going to use it for this project. And I am going to go in and trim some of this. I got a new pair of scissors the other day and they work wonderful. 
I know after a while with my scissors, you know, I clean them and everything, but they still just don't cut right, so I have to get new ones every now and again. All right, I'm still staying away from that score line. And this one is just a little further away than I want it to be. Because we want to cut out as much bulk as we can. Because when we start adding pictures, you know, that's going to take up some space. So, any little bit you can get away with, cut it out. Whoops. Okay, we're going to set this one aside for just a second. We're going to bring in this piece. Don't pre-fold this one. And you'll, you'll understand why when we get to that part. But don't score and burnish this one. Okay, I want a strong adhesive, and we're just going to put it at the two ends. And I do put quite a bit on there. You're going to be proud of me today, because when we come to folding this one, I actually took a picture of how it was supposed to look. So if I get caught up tonight, I won't look like, a, like I don't know what I'm doing. Like the card in a, the scrapbooking in a box, gift in a box. I just, I figured it out after the video, but, uh, it's so embarrassing because only things like that happen when you're on camera. Okay. Now, I just want to take this and give this a good rub down. Make sure it adheres well. Okay. So now we're just going to take this off. On each end. Okay. And we're going to bring our piece back in. And we're going to attach this at either end, on the left and the right. Now, typically I work with glue, but because this is a mechanism that's going to be open and closed probably a lot, I didn't want to use glue. I wanted to use something really strong, especially when you're gifting it. You don't want it to fall apart on you. So, you have to. <laughs> I have to really try to get this right the first time because I am not good at this. So, I really have to concentrate. And don't go over the score lines because you need those. Okay, now let me get my phone so I can do this right. I'm not confuse any of you like I did the other night. I don't want to do that. That's why I told myself today, take a picture. Okay, so with it going this way, okay, we want these to be folded up. We're just going to give these a little this one will go down. And these, let's see, where am I here? Okay, so we're going to pinch these up. And these are going to fold down. You'll have to play with it. why the score lines are really important. Alright, so these fold down. I 
figure out what, what's going on with this one. Let's see. Okay, here we go. This one folds down. down. Alright, so when it's all folded, these pop up. This one pops down. So this is how it's supposed to look after it's been folded. And I would highly recommend if you're watching the video and you're going to remake this, screenshot this, take a picture, and that way it'll be easier for you to fold when it comes down to it. So, now you can see we're just going to pick it up and we're going to smash it together. I'm just going to give it a nice burnish. I had to just, you know, play with it until it went right. It's just one of those things that's a little wonky at first, but then, like I said, take your picture. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put our ribbon on, and I forgot to cut a piece of two and three quarters. So let me get my two and three quarter inch piece. I'm trying to use up the paper pad. I'm down to like just scraps of this. That's all the Christmas paper I have left. I have some coming in. So, let me find a piece here. Go on the front. Let's do this one. We're going to need two of them. This is just a mess right here. So, you're going to need two pieces that are two and three quarters. And remember, when you're working with directional paper, you just want to make sure you have it going in the right direction. Direction. Ask me how I know. Okay. Eight and three quarters. Okay, so you need one for your front and one for your back cover. You don't have to do the back. I guess if you don't want to, I always just like the album to flow. So two and three quarters. I already cut all my two and seven eight square pieces and my little pieces. So. I did red on this one, but I'm going to do green tonight. And before we add on these pieces, we want to attach our ribbon. I'm going to show you how to do that. I put a little bit over here. Try to get it in the middle. And then I put another piece on the opposite side. just going to eyeball it here. I'm going to put one piece here. Get another piece here. Now, what we do to one side, we're going to also mirror and do to the other side because this has a closure opening on either side. So, we're going to have to do our ribbon the same way. Each side needs a ribbon closure. So what I do for this one is I just hold this up here and go down the length of the spool. So I know that this is as long as that one. And this one will be as long as this one. Okay, 
Now, whoop, now we can put our front covers on. If any of you use this art glitter glue, it's one of my favorites. I really like this glue. Nobody's paying me to say that, but um, it's something I've used for a long time. But the stainless steel pins in them, a lot of times you lay them down, they get lost. So what I did the other day was I took one of the magnets and voila, no more losing of the pin. So I thought I would share that with you in case somebody else didn't know. I do know though, if you do like that glue, you they don't ship it in the winter time because the glue will freeze. So at some point in time, they'll stop shipping it. And you'll have to wait until after winter to get any. the noise. I was looking over at my camera and it doesn't look like it's... Are you guys frozen? I hope not. Alright, so we have our ribbon closure on the other, either side. So when you open it up, it opens up. So now, when you open it up to decorate, this is where your 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths squares are going to go. And just depending on how you do it, I did mine in a pattern. I cut two sheets. And I started with um, like a more of a less busy pattern and then went to a busier pattern and just alternated. So I'm probably going to do the opposite this time. I hope I'm still alive. I was frozen there for a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to alternate the patterns. So I'm going to start with busy first and then go to a less busy. Just do the opposite of what I did the first time. So then basically what I would do is just alternate the 2 and 7 eighths by two and seven eight squared. And then you have these little ones down here. So what you'll do is just come in. These are already cut at two and seven eighths. You'll just come down to one and three eighths. I almost cut it wrong. And then these pieces will go along the edge here. So they'll go here and then here, depending on what paper is next. So you're going to have one, two, three, four. Then, this is where I was telling you on the inside, don't forget to do these. So what I do when it when I come down to get these is, because you don't want to leave them white because they will be shown, and you don't want that to be shown. I usually come in from the side with both hands, and when I have the glue on there, then I just 
put them into place. That's the easiest way that I have found to do it is to just come in from the side and put them in. And then, you know, you'll just continue your patterns onto the back. So it, I cut two pieces of eight and a half by 11 to get my two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths square. And then um, off of one strip, you're gonna have a piece left over about this size. And then that's what I use to cut the side pieces at one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. And they're already gonna be at two and seven eighths, so you just have to cut them down to one and three eighths. And that's all it is. I mean, and then, you know, you just fold it back up and then you decorate your front and then you'll tie it on the side. And you can tell, I mean, you can make these up ahead of time. You know, just add your ribbon and then fold them flat. And then as you need them, bring them out to decorate them. Easy storage because they lay flat. Even if you start these now for your Christmas cards, you know, they'll lay flat for keeping. They're not going to be piled up somewhere. And see, so you can trim your bows. I always like to do more than less because we can always take away, but we can't add more. So, and then there you go. I mean, it's just really a fun, I'm just so excited about it. I'm just so excited about it. I mean, look at that. All those photos you can add. You could do, this could also be, oh my goodness, I just had another light bulb come on. This could be uh, a December daily. You know, you could add a picture of day one or start, you know, midway. Because obviously this is not going to go carry you through 31 days. But not too much happens at the beginning. But around, you know, the second or third week, this could be like your December daily if you wanted it to be. That's another good idea. And think about that. So, many, I think there's many options for this particular one. I mean, I just absolutely love it. And when you start adding your paper to it, it'll it'll just start folding. It'll just start, you know, it'll just fold in on itself because it's just been worked so much. But that's why it's important to keep those score lines in there. I hope you enjoyed today's project, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks ever so much for watching.